I'm Gemma and this is Nonfic Books and I've got a sort of review and suggestions video today. We're including both fiction and non-fiction books and the non-fiction book is A Very British Murder by Lucy Worsley and that's the story of a national obsession. And this was published in 2013 by BBC Books which is an imprint of Random House and is 294 pages long. And this is looking at murders in Britain which became national phenomenons. It's less about the murders and it's more about the public reaction and how from the Georgian period through till the 40s and 50s it, the public reaction changed and got very obsessed with these crimes starting off with um, in the Georgian period them being selling newspapers and just having hundreds of articles about all the different murders including a lot of um, sort of graphic cartoons about what would have possibly happened in these murders um, through to the souvenirs that were then made some a bit gory books wrapped in the skin of murderers um, and then some really quite bizarre from our sort of point of view like china figurines of murder situations and murderers because that's a little bit weird but then they're also absolutely wonderful i'm just trying to find the picture marionettes um for react um replaying the murders so this is William Corden and his victim Maria Martin and you can tell by the immense amount of eyeliner that he's wearing that he's the villain and in this pretty innocent white dress she's obviously the victim. And then at the top you've got those uh, china figurines which is just a bit weird but hey ho. And then moving through into the Victorian period as um, the real crime started to again keep being very sensational but became... Um, inspirational for the first detective books and a large number of plays and theatricals and melodramas that really got people excited and learning a huge amount about these real crimes which was starting to be investigated by the new detective force which is something she does discuss a little bit in here. This isn't the most in-depth academic book, it's a tie-in with her TV programme which has recently been replayed on iPlayer so do go have a look. It, if it's still on there I'll put a link down below because it's really worth watching, it's very entertaining. Um, but it isn't the most academic book but she does have a wonderful bibliography um, for each, each chapter and I've just added about 50 books onto my <laughs> TBR because all of them sounded so interesting. And the latter part of her book deals with the golden age of crime and the rise of authors such as Agatha Christie and the kind of, from our point of view, cosy mysteries. They're very sanitised, there's very little blood and it's just an intellectual puzzle really, finding out who committed the crime or the murder. And this is one of my all-time favourite genres. I am an absolute addict to that sort of book. I can read them over and over again and look, sort of luckily for me in this in this instance I have an absolutely dreadful memory so I don't remember who's done it so I can read these books over and over again and it's always a surprise as long as I leave a few weeks in between them I'm coming to them pretty much new because I really do have a very bad memory and so that book was really entertaining very worth reading um, Lucy Whimsy has a very sort of whimsical style that I really really enjoy and I think her humorous approach to history makes her a very good popular historian. Um, uh, but I have some non -fic I have some fiction books relating to that that I'd love to recommend. And the first is Agatha Christie. Um, she's having a really big revival at the moment. You can just see her all over the place on um, booktube but they've reissued all of her books in different covers. And then there was the recent TV series, Tommy and Tuppence. Um, but my absolute favourite are the Poirot books. Um, and The Mysterious Affair at Styles is the first one. Large and detective using his little grey cells to solve mysteries in often very beautiful country house or beautiful London settings. So really, really enjoyable. I really recommend these books. She's not the most literary of authors, but they're hugely entertaining. The um, quality can be varied, but... Unlike a lot of other stories, I think you could read any book of hers, just pick it up and read it without losing too much of an overflowing narrative. Whereas some of these others, I really do think you need to read in chronological order. One that you definitely do is the Lord Peter Whimsey series by Dorothy L. Sayers, the first one of which is Whose Body. Dorothy L. Sayers is sort of a more literary Agatha Christie. 
Peter Whimsey is a sort of love-hate character, I think. Um, he's very upper class. He is quite stream of consciousness, frivolous, on purpose a lot of the time. He does try and give that to uh, that impression to put people too much at ease so they give themselves away. Which does make for a sort of writing style that I think you need to take a few... Don't write it off immediately. Take a few pages, a few chapters to really get into this. And once you've got his voice in your head, I think you'll absolutely fly through these and they are wonderful. The mysteries are great. They're very funny, very different. And some of the side characters in Dorothy L. Sayers' writing are just absolutely wonderful. And especially as you get on into the later part... You get to some of my favourite characters, um, such as Harriet Vane, who is amazing, and she's mentioned quite a lot in Lucy Worsley's book because uh, she was obsessed with Harriet Vane when she was younger too. And they're wonderful, wonderful books, and I highly recommend them, especially if you like Agatha Christie and you've been reading a lot of Agatha Christie, have a look at some of these authors because they're similar vein, similar time period, and similar levels of some of them better quality, some of them worse quality, but all the sort of books that if you enjoy Agatha Christie, you'll probably enjoy these too. And then Marjorie Allingham is probably one of the lesser well-known queens of mystery because there were four that were really held up, and these are the four that I'm going to be talking about. And her investigator is Albert Campion, and the first one is The Crime at Black Dudley, which is a country house murder mystery, but also hostage situation, very dramatic, lots of hidden panels. It's absolutely amazing romp of a book. Um, this is the book that introduces Albert Campion, but he's sort of a, um, not a minor character, but he's not the lead character in this, but he became so well loved that that's where she went with the books after this. And it's really good to start from this point because I think it's good to see how he is introduced to you. And then last but most certainly not least is Nagari Marsh, who was a New Zealand author but who spent a lot of time in England. And she has a slightly more theatrical bent. Um, she was a, probably New Zealand's number one um, director at this time. I think it was director. Um, hugely, hugely influential in the theatre in New Zealand. And her books are focus on Inspector Allen, who is an upper class detective, and there are quite a lot of her mysteries which are set in the theatre because it's a world she knew so well. But this particular one, A Man Lay Dead, was the first book and it's uh, set in a country house. Again, like I think all of the books, are not the first Lord Whimsy, but the rest of these three books are um, all country house mysteries. And this is absolutely fabulous. Inspector Allen is a wonderful character and some of the female characters that you meet throughout the rest of the series are absolutely fabulous. They're really, really worth reading. They're quite short. Um, you can also buy a compilation that has been published recently, which has um, the three books per single volume, which is a really good way of picking them up because they're really, really short and you fly through them. So I do recommend checking her out because she's absolutely fabulous. So if you're interested in the non-fiction, pick up Lucy Worsley's book. And even if you're not, her writing is really entertaining and very easy to read. So I would recommend, if you don't want anything too intellectual, to pick this up. And all of those other books are absolutely fabulous. And if you have any suggestions based off either this or those wonderful, lovely, cosy crime fictions, please do leave me any comments down below. And if you've got any questions, again, leave them down below and I'll get back to you. So hopefully I'll see you in a video soon. Bye.